Hello everyone and welcome to the 23rd Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games. I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offensive to complete this tutorial. Today we will be going over applying textures to your level. We're going to do most of our work in the face edit sheet, so open that up by pressing Shift A or this button over on the left here. And we're going to start by texturing this building here. If you don't know the basic controls for the face edit sheet, left click will lift a texture, right click will apply it to a face. Go ahead and click Browse here and do a search for Brick. We're going to be using this texture set here of Brick Wall 045. I have versions A, B, and F here. Your game may not have these textures, but there will probably be a set of brick textures that contains a bottom, a middle, and a top texture. We're just going to grab this and right click to apply it to the bottom here. And we've already run into a small speed bump. It's not aligned to the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to left click to select it. And then we're going to click under Justify B for bottom. What this does is it shifts the texture and aligns it with the bottom extent of that brush. So now we're just going to apply it to the rest of the faces here. And oh no, look, we've got another problem. So the other problem is that we have the bottom concrete in the middle of the brush. So we'll just grab the top texture and we'll apply it. So the molding at the top is there, but now we have it in the middle. So we actually have to cut this brush. We're going to cut it using the clipping tool and we're just going to draw the line and we'll see the line at the top here. And we're using split mode, so both sides are white and we'll click that. So now we have this top part, which is just the top, and we have this middle part. And if you'll notice, the top part is 128 units. 512 by 512 textures at the default scale of 0.25 will fit on a 128 by 128 sized brush. So in theory, we should just be able to grab this bottom texture and plop it there. But if you notice, as we back away from the texture, there's this weird white line here. This is due to how texture filtering works. And the way around this is to actually use the middle texture um, instead of the bottom or the top one. So we're going to click Browse, and we're going to grab our middle texture and just right click to apply it. The issue is still there, though. We have to make another small adjustment. We're going to grab these two here. And then we're going to go to the vertex tool by pressing shift V and we're going to select the vertices that are on that line. We're just going to use our arrow keys and nudge it up about four units and press shift S to go to selection tool. Now when we back up that line's not there anymore uh, because the top part isn't butted up to the bottom or the bottom part isn't butted up to the top so we don't get that weird texture filtering issue. So now we want to go ahead and wrap it around to the other sides. So we're going to grab the bottom and right click over here. And we'll notice that there's a bit of a discontinuation of the texture here where it kind of jumps. We actually want to wrap this around. So this is where Alt right click comes in. So by selecting this as the source face, holding the Alt key on our keyboard, and then right clicking the faces over here, we'll see that they changed a little bit. Now the texture wraps perfectly around this corner, um, which makes it just look overall nicer. So we're going to hold Alt and right click the rest of these faces. And we're going to do the same thing with the top texture. The last thing we need to do to complete this wall is make the same split brush here and use the middle texture that we did on the other side. And then hold Alt and right click to wrap it around. Now the last part that we have to do is this curved cylinder. We're going to start by making that same cut that we did over here because we have to use three brushes to get the textures to fit properly. So there's the first cut and there's the second cut. So now we have three different brushes here. And we're going to grab this face here and hold Alt and right click the first face here. Now if I hold Alt and don't change my source face, we're going to get these weird repeating and clipping issues. When you hold Alt and right click to wrap the texture, you need to constantly update your source face. If the source face stays the same, it's going to wrap it very weirdly. So we're using this as a source face. We wrap the first one change our source, wrap the next, change our source, wrap the next. So we're constantly changing the source face. And we just need to do this for all of these. And there we go. Now we have a perfectly wrapped texture around a curved piece of brush. This is one of the biggest things that I see new people do is they don't wrap their textures around and it just makes it look a little shoddy and it makes it truly stand out as someone who's new um, at the development tools. By just wrapping your textures, it, it kind of bumps up 
the level of professionalism uh, in your work. Having nice geometry with very bad texturing is an easy way to make it look bad. And if you're very proficient at texturing, you can make really simple geometry look very nice as long as you align and use the correct textures. The next thing we're going to do is texture this sidewalk, which has a bit um, advanced geometry to it. We have an arch over here and then a cylinder that's been cut into a fourth over here. So it's a basic sidewalk, which has a curved turn and another curved like end cap. We're going to go ahead and search for concrete. And there's actually a texture from train that we're going to use, which is this one right here. This uh, HR sidewalk A tint dark. going to select that. And I'm just going to throw it onto the wall over here so we can take a look at it. We have three parts of this texture. We have this dark gray part here, the front here, which is going to be the front of the uh, sidewalk, and the squares, which will be the sidewalk themselves. So let's go ahead and just put this front on really quick. We need to do a little bit of manipulation to get it exactly how I want it. So we're just going to right-click apply to the front, and we can already tell that it's, it's, it's rotated wrong. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And then we'll align it to the right, which is the wrong side. So we'll align it to the left, which is the correct side. So now we're going to uh, make this texture. Uh, we're going to make this brush taller, and we can see that I want this part, this top part here, to be at the top. So we're going to pull this down some, and that front part fits very well onto a brush that is 17 units high. So now we're going to turn this texture lock on with the top. What this does is this is scaling texture lock. So when you rescale the brush, it's going to keep the exact same amount of texture there. So we'll turn that on and then we'll scale it back down and it's going to smoosh the texture a little bit, which is what we want. So now we're going to, we're going to click on that and we see that the texture scale is 0.118. So we're going to copy that and replace the Y and hit apply. And now we have a not messed up part. So we're just going to wrap it around. Now we just need to put the top part on. So we're gonna do that that exact same way. We're gonna select it, and then we know it's rotated wrong. So we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And then we're going to align it to the bottom, and then left, which isn't quite what we want. So we're going to make it bigger again. And make sure you turn off scaling texture lock before you stretch the texture. So I'm actually going to move it with my arrow keys to align the squares to this right side here. And now I'm going to grab my clipping tool and clip up onto this line here where I want the texture to stop. That's perfect. So now we have a little bit taller. We need to go to 128 height. So we're going to turn texture lock back on, the scaling texture lock, bring it in. And we'll see that our scale is 0.227. Uh, so we want to change the Y as well. And now we'll have perfect squares, which is what we wanted. So now we have a problem with the arches here, because the arches are curved. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap using the, the back face of this texture to get our curve in. So we're going to select the long top as our source. Alt right click it to the back. So now we have this here. We're going to alt right click that to the angled sides and we're going to do this all the way around. And then we're going to grab the first angled part and wrap it around to the top. And we're going to do that for each, each angled bit. And right off the bat, we can see that it, it looks better. It's not perfect, but it is much better than the alternative. So you might just need to do a little bit of manual texture shifting, I guess, to make it look good. So we're just going to take these and maybe get rid of some of the lines because these big lines are what make it look really bad. And then that's probably good enough. If you spend more time manually aligning it, you'll have a much better time. The last thing that I'm going to show you guys is how to do an arch. Arches are essentially the exact same as what we just did, but they're vertical instead. We're just going to stone texture arch uh, this front facing part here. So we're going to grab our stone texture. We're just going to grab one from uh, Aztec here. Grab this one. And we're going to apply it to 
our flat one here, then align it to the top, which is perfect. And then we're going to alt right click it to the bottom and alt right click all these underside faces. And then we'll wrap it around to the front. We'll do the same on the other side. And then we have a really nice arch. And for the back side, you'll just want to copy the front side textures over the back. There's really uh, no quick way to do this. You just kind of got to bob your camera back and forth. And there we go. You can do the same with cylinders, but cylinders are kind of a uh, double-edged sword here. So if we grab a might be a pillar texture. We can grab this concrete kind of pillar texture here and we'll just drop it on one of the faces here. So and then we'll just alt right click it around and when we get around to here we'll see that there's very clearly a seam here. So sometimes you just have to deal with it. Sometimes you can select the entire brush and kind of manipulate it uh, by scaling it around to make it look less bad. Like if you put the dark spots there, uh, the seam becomes less noticeable and the rest of it is still wrapped perfectly. There's still a little seam if you get there, but you can always put a pipe on top of it and that kind of, uh, kind of fixes that issue for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile this really quick and then we'll just check out what this, uh, what this looks like in game. All right, so here we are in game. We can see that we have our textured building that looks pretty decent. A curved kind of cylinder bit and here's the sidewalk the textures are much less noticeably kind of wonky on the turn here in game once lighting is applied to them you can see we have a seam there um there's a few seams in other places that are super noticeable some are less noticeable like right here i left this line in um, so you can tell that there's a turn there but all you have to do is kind of fiddle with that more to make them perfect for what you need to do the front also looks really good with this texture here Looking over at our arch, the arch looks really good, especially from kind of backed away. You can't even really tell that there's uh, a few small minor seams in it. Uh, the pillar looks great as well. Um, up here at the front, this is where the seam is, but it's not super noticeable because we put the textures dark spot right there. So most of texturing is kind of just playing around with the textures using little bits that you like. For instance, if you just like the front of this texture, you don't have to use the top with it. You can use just the front for that little curb part, the little front of the sidewalk, and you can use a totally different sidewalk texture for the top. If you see in a texture that there's just a small area that you want to use, you can go ahead and use it for some detail stuff. Um, that's what really makes great maps great. I hope this tutorial has helped you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with version 2 tutorial series. Happy mapping.